a manager holds it together. And I had a couple of little managers that did nothing. And then I went to um, this woman, Duffy Mockery, who managed uh, this guy, Shep Pettibone, who's a big, big songwriter, producer. And he used to be in the studio all the time. She used to come in all the time. So I thought, well, I want her as a manager because she's always in the studio, you know, and she's always taking care of her clients. So I went to her, you know, she opens the door. She's like, hey, who are you? <laughs> you know, that kind of New Yorker. <laughs> And I said, hey, you know, I'm Tony Maserati. I, I think I reached out, blah, 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 whatever. And she said, all right, come on in. She, and she sat down and she said, all right, what do you got? And I was like, well, here's my demo tape, you know, and here's my resume and my discography and blah, blah, blah. And she looks at it. She, of course, she doesn't listen to the demo tape at all. She's like, you got nothing here. That's, those are her exact words. You got nothing here. What do, you, what do you got? What do you want me to manage? You got nothing. How much you making? And I was like, uh, you know, I'm making 800, 1200 mix, you know, or whatever it was I was making, you know, 30, 50 bucks a day. I don't know who the fuck knows what I was making in those days. Nothing. I was making nothing, <laughs> you know. And she was like, you got nothing here. Come back in a year when you got something. And they like scooted me out the door. And I was like, fuck, damn, man. All right, <laughs> here we go. So I, I hustled all year and worked my ass off. And, you know, things went well. I got a bunch of gigs. I got to the point where I, I just, I was like freaking out. I couldn't handle everything. I couldn't handle the paperwork. Couldn't do all the billing. Couldn't handle all the phone calls. All, everything going on. I was like, fuck, I can't do it. I was working with Puff. I was working with Devante. I was working with Heavy D. I was working with Trackmasters. I was working with a shit ton of projects all over town. I was working a session during the day. I'd work a session at night. Same thing the next day, the day after that, day after that. Just kept going and going and going, you know? So I show up a year later. I knock on her door. How you doing? Remember me? Yeah. What's what's going on? What are you What are you doing? Come on in. Come on in. Sit down. Blah blah blah. You know. I show my discography. I, of course, I still have the 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 demo, new demo tape, and you know all that shit. You know, set or whatever the fuck it was. And you know, I sit down and I stare, you know, stare across the table from her. She's like, "What are you making?" I'm like, "I'm still making fucking twelve twelve hundred bucks a mix, or you know, fifty bucks an hour, or whatever it was. You know, I don't fucking remember." And she was like, okay, good. Now we got something. What are you trying to do? And I'm like, well, I need to make more money. She's like, done. What else? And I was like, well, I want to work with whoever the fuck. Done. All right. See you tomorrow. Talk tomorrow. You know, outdoor. And that was it. We worked together for 17 years. Wow. Yeah. No contract. No contract. We, we still work together. She still handles some, uh, she handles stuff for my publishing company. And, uh, and the manager I have now is only my second manager, Jason Bernard. No contract. So great trust. I, I don't need a contract, man. Fuck that. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to a fault. Yeah. Um, and if they fuck me, I'm running. And you got no so. contract, so you don't have to worry about anything. You just walk away. Yeah. That's that's fascinating. 